very good day to all of you. My name is Kate and I'm a senior nutritionist from the Singapore Foundation. Okay, today the first recipe that I'm going to share with you is a quiche. Traditionally, quiche is a custard-like mixture that is made out of eggs, cream, cheese, meat, vegetables, and is usually surrounded with a pastry shell itself. But of course, today I'm going to share with you a simpler and healthier version. So for the recipes that will be required for today will be your egg, low-fat milk, reduced fat high calcium cheese, cherry tomatoes, and your seasoning such as black pepper and mix up. So to prepare, first of all, I'll actually quarter my cherry tomatoes. And I really love cherry tomatoes because it's packed with um, antioxidants such as lycopene, which is actually very beneficial for our heart. And in fact, um, lycopene actually is much more easily absorbed by our body after being heated and cooked with the ingredients itself. So I'll just quarter it so that the flavors will be released much more faster and easier while we are actually microwaving the dish. Okay, after you have quartered the cherry tomatoes, all you need to do is to mix in the different ingredients uh, in your egg itself. So I'll need around one and a half tablespoon of low-fat milk. Okay, around there. Okay, then I'll mix in my herbs. And I love to use mixed herb is because it's a mixture of different types of herb, which really gives it a really, really good flavor to whatever dish that you're using. It's so convenient. And of course, for someone like me who loves some spiciness in my food, I like to add in a little bit of black pepper so that it provides another flavor, another dimension of flavors into it as well. So once you have added ingredients in it, all you need to do is just to mix it gently. Okay, so the ingredients will be incorporated into the egg mixture. And while by doing this, it helps to fluff up the egg so that it will be airy and it will be really smooth and nice to consume it. Okay, so once you have mixed it up, I like to top it off with some cherry tomatoes. I'll just add it right into it. Okay, give it a good stir. Okay, and last but not least, I will top it off with a cheese. And this would be a really good touch because cheese itself provides um, some additional flavors into it and texture, which is really desirable for like, all of us who love to eat cheese in our various dishes itself. So I'll just place it right in and I'll actually place it in the microwave oven. I'll cook it at high power for around 80 seconds. But of course, this would differ depending on the type of microwave that you're using and how you like the texture of your egg to be. Okay, so I'll just put it right in. Okay, and the reason why I love this dish is simply because I love eggs. Eggs are tasty and it's packed with nutrients. And in addition, it's really versatile. If you don't feel like adding cherry tomatoes, you can actually add in some spinach onto it. And of course, for those who are worried about the cholesterol content in the eggs itself, I will say, good news, you don't have to worry about it. Because for a healthy individual, it's actually okay to consume around 1 to 2 eggs per day. But of course, if you are diabetic or you have high blood cholesterol because of genetic factors, I will recommend you to consult your doctor because your body will be a little bit more prone to the cholesterol in food. Ah, seems like it's ready. Wow, I wish I were really here. Okay, as you can see over here, the, the cheese really melt very nice right on top of the mixture itself. So usually for this dish, I like to enjoy it with two slices of wholemeal bread because it makes the dish even much more balanced and it provides an additional boost of fiber to our diet, which is really, really important. And to actually enhance the dish a little bit further, I like to add in some um, cherry tomatoes just right at the side so that it's actually much more refreshing, tasty and provide more nutrients to the dish itself. So this is it and I hope you really enjoy it. The second recipe that I'm going to share with you today is the red hot snapper with corn, which is actually like a steamed fish with chili sauce and corn to go along with it. 
To prepare it, first I'll need to do my chili sauce where I'll just require my chili, my garlic, lime, ginger and a little bit of lower sodium salt to enhance the flavour. Alongside, I'll also need my snapper and also some frozen corn to go along with it. To prepare this dish, first I'll need to prepare my chili sauce using this chili. Okay, for chili today, I'm using the bigger chili. But of course, if you prefer something with much more kick uh, in it, one more spicy, you can actually add in some um, chili party in it. So I'll just have to cut it smaller so that it will just fit right into my processor itself. Just more, okay? Simple, simple. I'll just put it right in. Just tuck it right in. Okay, alongside to balance off the flavor, you can also add in some garlic. Okay, some garlic, around three cloves of garlic and ginger. So essentially, this is like a chicken rice kind of chili. If you, if you actually blend it up together, the aroma would be really, really similar. Okay, last but not least, okay, for the main ingredients itself, I'll also be using some lime. I'll need the lime juice for around four whole limes itself. And in order to yield more juice from it, all you need to do is just to give a gentle rub. Okay, so thereafter, you actually have much more juices that is coming out from the lime itself. So I just have to cut it out. Okay, I'll just cut it out, remove the top. And later on, I'll just squeeze in the lemon juice directly into the container. If you do not like, like um, lime itself, you can actually add in some lemon. Okay, you can mix it up with some lemon juice to make the chili sauce a little bit much more refreshing. And in fact, you actually help to enhance the saltiness of the dish so that you do not have to add too much salt in it. Okay, you just add in right in. And last but not least, I'll top it off with a little bit of lower sodium salt. Okay, so that it actually helps to enhance the flavor of the chili sauce. I'll just cap it right in, then after I'll just blend it using a food processor. Okay, next, I'll just blend it directly and... Okay, and now the chili sauce is ready. As you can see over here, the chili sauce actually resembles a lot like the chicken rice chili um, sauce itself. So it's something that you can actually use it to eat with your meat or even use it as a marinade, which, I, which is what I'm going to do today. Okay, so to do this, I'll first take my fish. Okay, I'll place it in a microwave safe um, dish itself. And I'll just prep my chili sauce right onto the fish. Okay, you just spread it right on it like you're marinating it. You just put it as much as you want. Okay, so that it actually has much more flavour in it also. Just need to put it right on top. Okay. Okay, so I'll just top it off with some corn. Okay, so that you add some flavours and texture and make this meal a little bit more balanced as well. So once it's done, you just top it off. Okay, cover it with a microwave safe cover so that it helps to trap the steam into it so that the fish will actually remain moist even after microwaving. So I'll just cook this in, around, uh, in the microwave for around 3.5 minutes at high power. But of course, it also depends on the thickness of the fish as well. If it's thicker, you'll probably need to cook it slightly a little bit longer. Okay? Okay, so for today, although I'm using a red snapper, but it doesn't mean that this recipe has to be always using red snapper in order to have the same result as what you can see today. You can actually use other fishes such as salmon, garupa, and all sorts of fishes so long you like it. And of course, if you do not like spicy food, you can actually marinate the fish with ginger, garlic, and just top it off with a little bit of lower sodium salt, and it will really taste really good and fresh as well. Wow, you can see the colors in it. So all I need to do now is just to plate it on the plate itself. Just right over here. Okay, and I'll just place some corn over it. And I'll just Top it up with some black pepper. Okay, so that you add in more flavors into it. And we are done. 
Okay, so to prepare this meal, all you need is a microwave, which you can actually do it in your office pantry or even at the comfort of a home as well. And the reason why I like to add some sweet corn in, in it is because it helps to add in some texture and flavor into this dish to make it even much more um, delicious. I hope you like it. And now, I'm going to share with you how to prepare the third recipe, which is what I like to call it as a hearty convenience meal. The reason why I call it as a convenience meal is because it's really simple and easy to prepare. All you need is a rice cooker. For the ingredients, we will require brown rice, unsalted mixed vegetables, mushroom, cabbage, and your seasoning. Okay, as for brown rice, for today, I'll be preparing um, using one cup of brown rice. And for brown rice, I like to soak it um, overnight or at least a couple of hours. Reason being, it makes the brown rice even much more fluffy. And most importantly, it helps to reduce some arsenic content in the brown rice itself. Okay, so this is the um, brown rice which I soaked um, earlier. So I'll just add in right into the rice cooker. Okay. After you have added the rice into the rice cooker, you end you adding some water in it. So for water today, I'm using around one cup of brown rice to one point five cup of water itself. Um, the reason being is because later I'll need to account for some moisture that'll be coming out from the mushrooms, the unsalted mixed vegetables, and cabbage, which will make the rice really flavorful. Also, okay. Next, I'll actually add in some mixed vegetables. I love this because it's really, really convenient. You just have to purchase it from a supermarket and can actually toss it right into your, uh, your meals or different dishes that you are actually preparing on the day. And it's really colorful. So there's a lot of nutrients um, in it as well. Next, I like to use mushroom. Because mushroom itself is like a natural flavor enhancer. It contains glutamate, which actually gives it a unami flavor. Okay, that will help to elevate the flavor of the rice even much more further. And last but not least, I'll add some cabbage in the rice as well because cabbage itself has natural sweetness which gives a really nice, nice touch to the rice after you have cooked it. So once done, you just have to put it right into the rice cooker. Okay. And you just let it cook. Usually for, for such meal, it will take around 30 minutes or so. Uh, which for me, I think that it's really convenient. Firstly, for rice cooker itself, it doesn't really dirty your kitchen. So cleaning is very simple. And while you are waiting for the rice to be cooked, you can actually do some exercises or maybe you can just um, go for a shower. And right after you're done, you can actually enjoy the meal that you have been preparing. Oh, it seems like the rice is ready. Wow, the colors is really nice. Okay, so for the rice itself, you have seen it has almost cooked. So usually before serving, I like to top it off with some seasonings, um, like black pepper. You can just add it so there's some spiciness into it. I to add in a little bit. And also, most importantly, I like to add some um, lower sodium salt into it as well. Okay, you can just add it inside. And the reason why I love lower sodium salt is because it helps to provide that saltiness, but not compromising the amount of sodium in the dish itself. So it just give you a good mix. Okay, as you can see, the rice it actually all gloss up with the different um, flavors and the colors in the dish. And just give it a good mix. And you can actually enjoy it directly as it is. Okay, and for this dish, it's really versatile. Uh, and if you realize, I did not add any meat into this um, recipe itself because I want you to try and realize that actually we don't really need um, the meat to actually enhance the flavor. The various ingredients such as mushroom, cabbage, and even the mixed vegetables will actually help to enhance the flavor of the food. But of course, um, you could also make it even much more balanced by adding some meat probably around 10 minutes um, before the rice is ready. And this would be a really, really balanced and, and, and enjoyable meal that you can try and enjoy at home as well. So.
Okay, so for the fourth recipe that I'm going to share with you today is a overnight oats, which is what I think is the most simplest uh, recipe that I have showcased for today. So to prepare this, all you need is your oats, chia seed, um, milk with plant sterile, berries such as your blueberries, raspberry, unsalted baked nuts, and also banana as well. Okay, so when it comes to oats, a lot of people like to ask me, Kit, is quick cook oats better or raw oats is better? I would say so long it's unflavoured, generally they are about the same. The key difference will be mainly on the texture and the cooking duration, where raw oats itself generally have some mouthfeel after you have prepared it, so you can actually taste and actually bite and chew on the oats itself. But on the other hand, quick cook oats actually is a little bit more softer and mushier. Okay, and on the other hand, if you prefer something that is easier and faster to prepare, uh, quick cook oats will actually be a better option. Okay, so for today, um, I'll be doing uh, two servings for the overnight oats where I'll need around 100 gram of oats. Okay, so to do it, you just need an airtight container. You just pour the oats right into it. And for myself, I like to add in some chia seed into it. Um, the reason being is because chia seed itself is like a natural thickener and it helps to add some creaminess into the oats in it. And most importantly, it also gives an additional boost of fiber and good fats into your overnight oats. After which, you can actually add in some milk with plant sterile, just enough to cover it. Okay, just to cover it uh, will be sufficient. Okay, so for today, the liquid that I'm using is actually a low-fat milk that is fortified with plant sterile, which I personally like it a lot because it not only um, provides a boost in calcium, but it also comes with plant sterile, which could actually help me to lower my blood cholesterol. But of course, you can also consider other options, such as soy milk, uh, where you can choose the option that does not contain any added sugar and comes with some omega-3, which will actually have some similar benefits as well. Um, alternatively, if you like additional creaminess to your overnight oats, you can also consider adding low-fat plain yogurt into it as well. Okay, so once you're done, you can actually place this overnight oats into your fridge and just chew it uh, and you can enjoy it the very next day. So after you chew it overnight, you will notice that a lot of the liquid or otherwise the milk has been absorbed into the oats itself. So depending on preference, some would actually enjoy to consume it directly as it is. Or otherwise, if you're like me, you can actually thin it a little bit with some milk so that it's uh, much more easier for you to mix in with your other flavours from your um, bananas and from your raspberries and other, other fruits itself. Okay, so usually I like to top it off with some fruits. And for today, I'll be using some berries like blueberries. You can just add right into it. Okay, berries. We help to add additional flavours into it. Um, some raspberry as well. Okay. And I also like to add in some banana into it. Okay, banana actually contains a good source of potassium, which is beneficial for our heart as well. So I'll just add in right into it. Okay, depending on your preference, you can just cut right into it. Okay. Okay, lastly, I like to top it off with some unsalted baked nuts because it helps to add some texture, some crunchiness into the overnight oats. And most importantly, it provides an additional boost of good fats into the overnight oats itself. Okay, so once it's done, you can actually enjoy it right off. You can just go and enjoy your overnight oats itself. And the thing that I like about overnight oats is because it's really versatile. Everything is really based on your preference. Like what I've mentioned earlier, if you don't like milk, you can actually consider soy milk or even yogurt. And in fact, you could also enhance the flavour a little bit further by adding some dark cocoa powder, if you like chocolatey flavour. Or otherwise, you can actually stir in some 100% peanut butter as well, which will give the flavour uh, additional dimension as well. So I hope you enjoy it. In summary, I've actually used two cooking appliances to prepare the dishes today. The very first one is a microwave oven, where I'd like to highlight to everyone that microwave oven is not just meant for reheating. It could be used to steam your fish over here. It could also be used to cook your various types of vegetables as well. And secondly, for a rice cooker, it's not just meant for you to cook your plain rice. You can actually toss in some vegetables in it, ingredients in it to actually enhance the flavour 
And in fact, do you know that rice cooker can also be used to cook your soup and even used to make your cakes and even more easy as well. And last but not least, for oats. A lot of us typically like to enjoy um, the hot bowl of oats where we need to cook it um, over a pot and a stove. But for today, uh, what I've shared is that you can actually prepare it simply without any heat. Okay, all you need is actually to soak the oats um, in your preferred liquid, which can be your milk, your soy milk, or even yogurt. And once it's soaked, you actually be soft and it can be consumed as it is, which I really love it because it really tastes like a dessert. Okay. If you're interested to find out more about heart health information, hearty tips, and as a bit, you can actually visit our National Heart Week World Heart Day 2020 virtual. Thank you.